Game number one, ladies and gentlemen, at the Heroes Championship Qualifier for Katowice. The first game between Edge of Madness and Elysium is being played now into the left side of the map on Sky Temple. Our first map in the best of three, we have Drakia on Thrall, we have Reigns on Muradin, Lolovic on Jaina, Nathan on Vala, and Gnappis playing Charism. To the right side of the map, their opponents, we have Team Elysium with Mitch on Uther, Dirty Sweet on Zagara, Saka on Johanna, Mondake on Leoric, and Xagonos is playing Fawcett in this setup. So this is going to be a fun one. We had a couple of problems with the draft at the beginning. Slow, uh, slowed things down here, but now we are good to go. I'm Carlo. With me is Tetcha, and we're going to bring you the coverage here at the first game between Edge of Madness and Elysium. Yes, we are. For the first start of the game, we see Falside immediately flying up to the watchtower. However, he arrives so quickly before the rest of his team, he has to back up due to the five-man uh, tower to capture by the side of Edge of Madness here, who are now roaming as a five-man to the bot lane. Zagara has yet to set up her creep on some of these uh, some of these bushes, so needs to be careful. And here they come. They're just going straight into the lane. The creep does spot him. Dirty Swede already able to pull back the creep, giving him vision, and he was way away from that bush, so he's not going to get caught out. Yeah, at this moment we have Zagara as usual on the bot lane, trying of course to push that in, trying to get the control here. The teams at the top are still pushing, so taking an opportunity. They saw that most of the heroes on the side of Edge of Madness were located at the bottom of the map, so they pushed the tower in. Did not actually take it down, but Saka can now maybe with a shield glare finish the job. And that's exactly what's happened. Get the shield glare in, use his iron, uh, his like trade to just move away for now. And with the Iron Skin, and no problem here to escape. With the level 1 talents, we have pretty much the standard talents here to take first of all. A bit of wave clear on the side of Johanna with the Knight Takes Pawn. Leoric, of course, going straight into reanimation to make sure that later on he's going to arrive so much faster. Vision still capped here by Nathan, and the teams are getting ready for that first Temple Wave that we have now announced on the map. Indeed. The role has been staying in the bot lane for now. He is actually able to sustain a Dirty Speed quite a bit thanks to his self-healing from Frost Rock Resilience. So, you can see him, he's pushed Dirty Speed back a little bit, just to prevent that snowball you can get in the bot lane with Zagara. And if he wants to, he can rotate up, but it's likely he'll stay down to stop Zagara getting too much work done. And for now, we're seeing a bit of a temple swap, we're seeing Elysium going straight for the top one, and Edge of Manus taking control of the middle one. Yeah, and both of the teams are starting to pressure at the same time. Of course, Sky Temple is one of the maps in the pool where the objective is the attacking the structures of the opponent's team directly. Meaning, the more structures you take down by sheer force, the better for the objective soak than later on. Level 4 talents are currently already dropping on the side of the red team, and we're having in this case Uther immediately with a protective shield. Uther, of course, with a couple of changes now as well. Since Cleanse was changed and improved, a lot of Uther players will go into Cleanse again. Wave of Light and uh, the talents with Boundless Conviction were taken before quite often, actually. But right now, most of the supports are going back into Cleanse since the talent is absolutely amazing here, of course. And now both of the teams on the same level and also the same talent. Yeah, so... Both have temples already gone, so Teach is playing safe, not really willing to fight for the moment. It is zero kills to zero. Very different to the games we saw yesterday, uh, especially with Euronic, where we'd usually see the first kill within like the first 30 seconds of the game. Yeah, at this point, we actually have no talent taken on Johanna. The choices here are Laws of Hope, Eternal Retaliation, and interestingly enough, it's Amplified ah. Healing that she goes for. It's a very rare talent to see skilled on Johanna. Laws of Hope is just incredibly strong as a sustained talent, so more often than not, you're going to see Laws of Hope here if Johanna really wants to stay alive with this. The option that is oftentimes chosen is Eternal Retaliation, which reduces the cooldown depending on the number of units that are hit with the Condemn, and especially on maps like Tomb of the Spider Queen, and on towers or, or the shrines and the inferno shrines, it's an incredibly powerful talent that is oftentimes taken. I can't even remember when it was the last time that I've seen Amplified Healing, so it's a bit of a surprise to see Saka go for it here. Yeah, I don't think I have seen Amplified Healing in a long time. Like, the, the only time I'd usually I saw it would be in like just random custom games for people where someone would pick Regen Master Level 1 as well, but even then you just get extra health regen from Lords of Hope. Uh, by the way, at the same time, we have now the camp already taken, but they're going to time it. So Knappe is currently waiting around, making sure that nobody is going to move in oops, and steal that. But as you can see, they are just like attempting to time that camp with the announcement of the temple at the bottom. Something like this is actually a thing that you're oftentimes going to see in the competitive games on the pro level, since teams are trying to get the most value out of a camp. So we already have the one taken over here to the right side, and the bruisers are making their way onto lane, which allows now Edge of Madness to de-push those bruisers with one or two heroes and then take their own camp. So they're going to try and do exactly that. They're starting to take it as the temple is announced at the bot lane, but it still allows Elysium to move in and take the four down up at the top, which is also going to give them a slight increase in experience. 
Yeah, let's see him knowing that that camp is going to be time, so just taking advantage of it and realizing that at least one hero would be busy and ready to capture that camp and would not want to leave it in case there was a raid. So they were able to take the top fort. There's still putting pressure on this lane, killing off that bruiser camp that was just taken. But while this is happening, we can see the Edge of Madness have taken control of this temple in the bot lane. And they're getting pretty much all the shots from it because Elysium haven't come down. They're just still pushing this top lane. Yeah, they're pushing the top lane. Of course, especially Falsa can fly down whenever he wants to. We have Paralyzing Rage, by the way, taken on a level 7 for Leoric. Not going for the Ghastly Reach here. And for Jaina, the Icelands has been chosen as the level 7 talent with Endless Creep on Zagara. And once again, they're starting to try and go for the temple. Falsa already flying in, trying to take a hero down Dragon is in a bit of trouble as Mondag is pushing him back but in this case they are able to take over the sh shrine everybody moving back we have only one kill in the entire game thus far Nathan starting to move in now too but the team is starting to fall behind and that level 10 is already looming on the horizon for the red team Elysium is playing extremely well here and will get the heroic ability a bit faster than their opponent yeah, and they're trying to use that to their maximum advantage to push in this bot lane. They will easily get this tower at minimum. The question is how much more they can get before level 10 is hit by uh, Edge of Madness here, which is just about to happen. As you can see, Elysium already backing up. They don't want to fight this. They actually haven't had the heroics picked by Leoric yet. He's waiting to see what is picked by the side of Edge of Madness. Nice two there. There it is picked. But Elysium not willing to rush into a strafe and take all that damage just to go for a kill. Nathan actually getting away in this situation. It looked for a moment like he would be the first kill on the side of Elysium, but that didn't really happen there. We have great talents, by the way, taken. Once again, this combo with a potential Mighty Gust into the Entomb, and of course, we're seeing Sundering, Strafe, Divine Palm has been chosen on Charism, trying to go for that Panic Button move as a hero is being attacked. We have Avatar taken and Water Elemental. With the setup that they're running here, they could have gone for a Ring of Frost, but the Water Elemental is, of course, one of those drop and fall get heroics that you can oftentimes use you will have to reapply it if the target dies but in general the water element gives you control over the fight slows targets down which can be extremely nasty if you put it on the back lane oh nathan in trouble at the top lane again xagonos with a very nice fly in here but nathan paying attention and not dying to his opponent yeah, and they're playing very safe here. Bot lane under a lot of pressure. More used on the Thrall here. This could be very dangerous. Monduk in position. This time is Drain Hope. There is the Entomb onto Drake here. Completely trapping it. And Mitch stunning out Mate here. And they're trying to focus down Drake here. He is going to get palmed into... And there's the Sundering. That will allow him to get away. That was a, a three very nearly four as Johanna was on the way down. Man gank. And they were still able to get away. Very well played. One kill in the game so far. It's seven minutes in already. We have still Falsa at the top lane trying to soak a bit of experience, but the temples are now taken once more. And we have Edge of Madness in the middle of the map trying to go for the temple here immediately. We're seeing them in position already. And this is the temple that's being fought over. Bottom temple is completely ignored. The teams are still in level 10 talents. Most of the cooldowns. Well, we have two to three abilities off cooldown here when it comes to the heroics. And Falsa is starting to fly in now too. Frontline, of course. Muradin once again in position. We have Leoric trying to push them back and the temple is conquered by Elysium as we see Edge of Madness starting to rotate down to the bot lane to at least get a few shots from the bot temple. Elysium were thinking about contesting them but instead realize there's still a couple people here in this mid lane so they're going to try and push it in, try and sneak a kill and maybe grab someone. The four in the bot lane as we just saw had very low health so did go down giving it a slight boosted XP over to Edge of Madness, but there's still two people down here in this uh, mid lane, so they have to be careful to not get caught out and not take an unnecessary fight. The teams are starting to get a bit closer to level 13. That's true of bo for both of them, especially since the Forge just was eliminated and dropped extra experience into the hands of Edge of Madness. And the 13s are ready. Very likely that we're going to see a Burning Rage on the side of Muradin, maybe, to make sure... No, he goes for the extra damage, not trying to get rid of the Creep Tumors in any case now. We're having instead the extra damage against single targets with a Thunderclap. The team is moving down to the bot lane, but Nathan is still missing on Vala. He's now on the way, which puts now Edge of Madness into a 4 versus 5 at the bot lane. They can't contest the temple, shots are being soaked, hold your ground as the level 13 talent on the side of Johanna is going to make it a little bit easier here with a cooldown on the uh, iron skin and the shield is of course going to be increased too. And we have Burning Rage taken for Leoric instead. So Leoric is taking Burning Rage here for a bit of extra damage, whereas Muradin decided to go into the clap damage. But I really feel that it would have been a smart choice here to go into Burning Rage. Looking at the creep spread on the map, I mean, Jadong would be proud of that. There's so much vision here. It's like a legal map hack that Elysium is currently controlling. And it's very tricky, even with the AoE spells that they have, 
for Age of Madness to get rid of all of those. Yeah, they have a pretty m a amazing path of creep. Like, it's just a creep highway between bot lane and mid lane, going almost all the way up to the watchtower. They have such good vision on the map at the moment. And nice iron skin there. Johanna back in a way, not getting stunned by Reigns there. And we have a double giant killer on the side of Edge of Madness. One giant killer also on Falstead in this case now. Mutalisk was, of course, the talent taken for Zagara. And the vision on boss alone is already such an incredible asset. I mean, if you know what your opponent is doing around that area, it's absolutely amazing. And we still have one of those creep tumors down here. The teams are now just rotating throughout the map, trying to get a camp every now and then. The Bruiser camps up again. Zagara is getting experience at the bottom. You can really tell how cautious both of these teams are right now. It's one of the best matches that we had in the first round here of the tournament the teams are playing on eye level as you can see and of course both of them want to advance through the qualifier and it's incredibly important i mean this is one of the most important tournaments in 2016 especially at the start of the year here and both the teams are very well aware of that yeah still almost completely even icebox being used to try and counter the two but there's the slow and the stun that's two heroics used to try and kill jada there they do get her but jada did throw down water elemental and they're going to lose the fort tier that even coming in to secure this. In the meantime, top lane still being pushed here via Edge of Madison. They will get a fort as well. So it's fort and a, uh, fort, a fort and a kill in favor of Elysium there. And they actually got bot fort as well. Yeah, Zagara we have level 16s in. now. Zagara pushing the bot lane and more experience now for the team in red, which leaves us with Benediction as the talent on Uther taken here for the double heals or stuns. We're seeing hammer time for Falstead, which is an incredibly powerful talent for the ranged assassin. And of course, the brute expansion for Zagara. More and more damage coming out from her now. Yeah, imposing presence for Johanna Leoric. Uh, we usually see a bit of extra swinging going on, but I wouldn't be too surprised to see him take imposing presence as well, considering that both auto attacks on the enemy team have gone for that giant killer, so that would allow him to counter that quite well. But now we see Elysium, and in fact it is an imposing presence. But now we see Elysium focusing on that middle temple, whereas Edge of Madness taking control of the top one. Faustad hopping around that area, just getting XP from the mini wave and thinking about going in now that he is getting some reinforcements. Yeah, we have the Mutalist already starting to chase Mirrodin. Here comes Mitch trying to go for a stun with Uther. They are attempting to go for Dracula and Thrall is isolated. Only Mirrodin trying to help oh him out, but God. Thrall is dead. And they are turning around against Mirrodin now, who already used stone form on level 16, trying to move away here. Vala went for... Oh, there we go. Nice and tomb being used. The cooldown is already in. Where's the mighty Gus? There, they are starting to trap again Mirrodin and even slow down also Karazim, who gets stunned. They move in for another kill. It's a five versus three situation already and Elysium is looking really strong here. Vala with all that damage that is being dished out from a distance decided to go into stone skin over blood for blood but a very tricky position now for Edge of Madness. They're starting to fall farther and farther behind in the game and there's still tower shots left at the top where Zagara is now taking over the temple. Yeah Elysium after that one fight have really started to snowboard this game. It was fairly even with both teams having no forts and down to just keeps but now Middle key is already gone for Regi Madness. Let's see him backing up, playing safe thanks to that Wraith Rock. Monduk was not in any particular danger. Ah, well, right now we are once again seeing a bit of a chase in the mid lane as Mondak, Saka, and Saganos are all walking away. They can't get locked down, as you already mentioned, so it's really difficult for the blue team to get anything done here. They are falling farther behind in experience, and once the level 20 is reached, that is going to be a massive problem. Not only because of that, but also because we have the first keep eliminated, so that means once we have more temples on the map, they're going to attack the other two, and then it's only the core that's being left. Of course, there's always the chance to go for boss, but with all those creep tumors, it's going to be really tricky to uh, do that without the opponent immediately knowing about it. And that's exactly what's happening here. Dirty Sweet is moving over, saying like, well, if you take down my creep tumors, I'm just going to place down new ones, because we definitely want to know what's going on around that boss area. Yeah, having vision of the boss is fantastic. We saw many games yesterday where getting vision of the boss, especially on uh, Towers of Doom, was the difference between winning and losing, in fact, just a good owl into that boss area but the creep tumor just allows that more permanent vision you don't have to just time your rails when you, uh or have it off cooldown when you really need it this is just a lot easier and in fact the only way they can clear this creep tumor is if they actually aggro the boss and that could be a mistake yeah right now you can really tell like they're trying to just open up any kind of advantage for themselves but they're two levels behind they go for monday but he can still use the wraith walk and that's exactly what he does moves away false set is getting some experience at the top lane and he's extremely cautious about it he doesn't move out anywhere before he knows where the opponent is positioned with the entire team now once again a camp is taken to the right side but all that elysium wants to do is hit level 20. 
Yeah, they're just trying to soak it right now. Leoric taking quite a bit of damage, but once again, here's Leoric just able to rake walk out of there, not taking that risk. Edge of Madness really putting the pressure on right now. They've definitely got that fight before 20. Moving in, stealing the camp here, actually. Very well done by Rated. And a bit of a scuff up the top by Drakia, taking quite a bit of damage. There's the Vitus, because the Dixie Jay Sundering used onto Zagara, but Drakia gets taken down. So does Leoric, though, a bit lower down. And Zagara still being focused by Muradin. Now, there's the Divide Shield to keep her alive, and Joe Haddock caught. He's picked off the ball from Zagara, trying to save her, but it was too late. And uh, Reigns has left the game, but hopefully he will reconnect. And we're going to have a quick pause while we wait for that. Yeah, we had actually like a very nice development there as well. You could really tell how Karazin was trying to jump in to save Thrall. The problem was that Thrall was dying just half a second before he started to use Divine Palm. And therefore Divine Palm did not end up on Thrall because he was already dead, but on Karazim instead. So a bit of a problem here with the timing on Karazim's end. And that cost Thrall his life. So Thrall already down. It's still a one for two trade that we're seeing here. Only a few experience points left until we're going to have the red team in possession of those Storm Talents on level 20, but it's a very tricky situation right now since they are down two heroes. Zagara is very low, Sweet has to pay attention here, and the problem is still that there's a temple on the map that can be taken at any point now by Edge of Madness. There's a boss on the map as well, and there's also a keep up for the taking. Yeah, I would not be too surprised from here to see Edge of Manus maybe rushing down to that boss and then the temple, or just going for the temple as the safer play. While they still have that Johanna down, the Leoric is down, but is Leoric, he will be back much quicker than that timer does show. So uh, it's going to be up to Edge of Manus to see what they can do to try and snowball it from this position where they've managed to get a slight advantage for one of the first times in the game. Yeah, and right now when you look at the, like, the damage output as well, we're currently looking at Zagaro with 34,000. She has still the top damage in the game, thanks to all of those Hydra lists and Mutal lists, of course. At the same time, Thrall still on a solid 20k, whereas Jaina is at 29. And the heroes that are still alive here on the side of Edge of Madness, we have the tank at the front line, we have a double damage in the back, and Charism is also ready. The heroic abilities are all in cooldown, which is definitely going to become a bit of an issue. Leoric is dead, he's the only one whose heroic ability is not on cooldown, actually. So there's very little risk at this point for Edge of Madness to push this in a little bit further and try to go for a keep. So they have to make a few decisions here. Do they try and go drop the keep? Do they move to the boss instead? Personally, I really think that going for boss would be a very risky move right now because, first of all, the Auric is going to follow them. So he's going yeah. to see immediately what's going on. Creep is also still being spread at the bot lane. So the Auric is going to resurrect at the scene of the fight. When the, if they actually do it, Falstead is going to have his heroic ability up in another 22 seconds, and with that mighty gust, they could actually try to steal the boss away. So I feel that would be a pretty risky move. What I think they should do, and could do at this point, considering that they still have hit points and mana on the heroes, is push in the top lane, at least drop the two towers, maybe take the keep, put some pressure on it, and before we see Leoric come back, move back a bit and try to secure the bot lane with the temple. That would allow them to maybe take the keep top, at least pressure it, and with the temple at the bot lane, put more pressure onto the bottom keep. They won't be able to take it down with the shots on the temple, but it would give them a bit of a lead, and maybe with that camp that we're still seeing moving in here, I don't really feel that there's a big chance for the red team to move in. The problem that they're still facing then is, though, that the red team, that Elysium, is going to hit that level 20 in the Storm Talents, and that would put them in a very passive position. Yeah, and uh, because the, uh, the Red Team are so close to those Storm Talents, I would consider that maybe just going straight for that boss. Like, yeah, that tower at the top lane is pretty, is uh, already taking some damage, and at this late stage of the game, they can burst down quite quickly. So, yeah, maybe we could see them going for that. But I really expect maybe going to the bot lane and just securing the temple while they have this one-man advantage would be, it's definitely going to be the safest move, especially seeing as they do actually already have a set of Siege Giants in the bot lane. So putting pressure onto that bot lane is going to really force uh, Elysium to stay back in their base for at least a little bit so that they have to deal with the Siege Giants due to the pressure that's been put on. And that will give Edge of Madness a bit more time to secure objectives on the map as opposed to if they were staying up and having to fight at that bottom temple instead. Yeah, one of the advantages that they would have by taking the temple now as well is that they get actu that they actually get the temple. Because if you look at it like this, is once that they are 5 versus 5 again with a level 20 dropping on the side of Elysium, they won't be able to really get an objective on the map. So if they take the temple now, 
it's going to take quite some time, a couple of minutes until the next temple is going to be announced. That should be enough time for them to actually soak level 20 themselves. So it's the only chance that they get within the next few minutes to secure an objective for themselves. And with those tower shots, they would drop additional towers and then they can get some experience out of that. So it's a bit of a tricky moment. And in that case, they can actually also think about how exactly they are going to play this right now. And well, we have the game back. So let's see how, what they are going to do here. Looks like they move back for now. Oh, actually, second pause here yeah uh, there was there was no warning on that uh on that on pause there so just repausing making sure that everyone is ready and uh we're gonna see what they're gonna do here we only currently see uh one hero m oh no we don't see any here we see uh nathan mounted up here so that could be the possibility of moving down to that bot lane but we will have to see ah uh, <laughs> the chat is getting a little bit aggressive which is quite mm -hmm. understandable if all of a sudden the game is being unpaused. I mean, yep. not really too much happening there. Uh, but yeah. Okay, so at this point, well, Mitch is still at the front. Mitch on Uther here. The problem for him is really that his Uther moved in. So all of a sudden, he's a little bit exposed here. Yeah. But I don't. I, I really don't feel that the blue team is going to take advantage of this. I mean, this is, of course, one of no, the reasons why Mitch is currently mentioning it. Because he's saying, like, hey, my character is moving right into your team. Reigns is apparently yeah. having issues, but yeah, there's no way that Edge of Madness is going to try and snipe Uther now. Yeah, it would be, pre would be uh, pretty BM if they did do that. I expect they'll let him go and probably do what we were talking about earlier and move down to that bot lane, or at least back up, give him a chance to reposition. Even if not, then uh, Mitch does not have to find shield off cooldown, so if they do decide to punish it, then uh, that's going to be a pretty severe kill. Okay, Drak here already asking if everybody's ready, so yep. sorry for the small break there, but of course we want to continue this with 5 versus 5. And 4 versus 5, Mitch is ready, so he's going to move back on his Uther immediately as the countdown. Thrall still dead for 30 seconds, so yeah, Mitch is moving back, everybody's just like backing off for now. So the top lane camp is still pushing this in, and we're seeing Edge of Madness moving back as expected. Leoric is already high on her heels, trying to make sure that he sees exactly what's going on. Bot lane is going to be incredibly important right now. And the teams are starting to orientate themselves down to the bottom of the map. Only five more seconds until Leoric is back, so yeah, it's going to end up in a 4 versus 4 fight, potentially as the temple is now being taken by Karazim, and as expected, the deep push happened first. The Siege Giant has been taken out now, but the temple is starting to fire the first few shots, as level 20 is now reached for the team in red, with one Storm Shield, Epic Mount, we have the Bolt of the Storm, Johanna most likely going to go into Indestructible, and we are seeing Leoric with a hardened shield here as well. Even with those level 20s, though, they are not willing to go in for the fight, and so that timed out very, very well here for Team uh, Edge of Math is they were able to grab two minion waves in the mid lane to boost their XP up and get most of the shots from bot lane. But with Johanna back, they're really not comfortable fighting in this bot lane anymore. So they're leaving two heroes who actually have escape mechanisms, the Karazim and the Muradin as the main people in this bot lane. And as you can see there, gives a nice escape for Karazim so that he doesn't get caught out. Yeah, so they got most of the shots on the tower. They were able to destroy the entire wall over here. That gave them additional experience, but as we can all see, they are still one and a half levels behind. They need one level until they hit level 20, and before they have the final tower, and they are probably very reluctant to fight. Final shots are fired towards the left side, and they are starting to take the camps. Vision on the map and just anticipating where your opponent is positioning themselves is that, like so important right now. You can't run into a 5 versus 5 fight. This is incredibly important, but they need of course make sure that there is no go for boss. That's why Reigns is moving in here with Muradin. Just double checks what's around the corner before he moves back once again. So right now, with level 20 versus 19, we have the teams just like trying to set up good positions for themselves. And even that camp at the top is a bit of a risk. We have Elysium trying to capitalize on that level 20 though. They are starting to push in the bot lane with the Siege Giants that they already took a bit earlier. Yeah, they're using as much of their advantage as they can. They're also having to back off, took a little bit of damage there. Whereas in the meantime, also a camp is still being taken by Edge of Madness. Even though level 20 was get by Elysium, they still feel comfortable grabbing that camp before coming down to defend. But now they are moving in as a team still without those level 20s. But Heroics are mostly off cooldown, so they're going to be ready for a fight. Yeah, they already lost one keep a bit earlier. They're trying to go for level 20 and Tomb is there, but well, Trying to entomb a Muradin that hasn't used his Dwarf Toss yet is usually a bad idea and that's exactly why. Simply jumps over it and that's it for now. So 
No chance to fight with a level 20 advantage on the side of Elysium, so they're moving back right now. Move through boss would be a bad idea to actually go for it, and they don't. But they have level 20 talents now against them as well, with a peaceful repose taken on the side of Karazim. A triple ball of the storm for Thrall, Jaina, and Vala, and Muradin with the hardened shield here for the extra sustain during the team fights. Yeah, so evasion and sustain the name of the game for most of these teams. And right now we see the temples active. The boss is, like we said, active. <laughs> Trying to accurate it a bit there. Managed to get one hit onto Karazim. But the temple's up in 10 seconds. And Elysium have full control of both the temple areas. And Manus have to basically walk past them in order to have a chance of getting anywhere near the top one at least. And the mid one is also very protected as well. Leoric staying near it, not even going for the top temple yet. Just in case his team wants to have a fight there. And right now both teams beginning to foster around this, looking for their opportunity. And Tomb is back off cooldown. Yeah, and Tomb is back off cooldown. He can use it again. Maybe try to snatch Jaina here. The problem is that there are so many Bolt of the Storms right now, and that nearly makes the Auric with that in Tomb useless, but it forces the cooldowns, of course, if he can put a good one on a hero like Thrall, like Jaina. The temples are being fought over, but still up at the top, we have Johanna already securing one for Elysium. And let's not forget that they still have a Siege Giant at the bot lane, which is going to pressure the keep even more. Yeah, right now we see Edge of Madness moving up to the top lane. They realize that Elysium backed away from the mid lane and tried to get shots from the top temple. But Elysium actually backed away from that as well. Elysium very much avoiding the fight despite being even on times and actually having a level advantage because they know that all of their lanes are pushing. And there are the shots going onto the top lane. Top lane already to lose the key bracket is B to try and defend this. And that gives Elysium the opportunity to move into mid as well. So they're going to get shots from both temples. Johanna coming down here because Thoral is on his way back to the fight. Looks like we may see a team fight there. There's the two, not really catching anyone. The Oric having to back up here. Leoric moving back at the same time, the stun against Muradin, bottom keep is about to fall, there's still one siege giant, but the snipe attempt against Leoric gets a shield with the storm shield, see Thrall is using his sundering, and in comes Muradin, once again jumps and goes for the stun, Leoric is already down, at the same time they're now trying to take down Zagara, which is of course incredibly vulnerable here, Sargonos with a quick mighty gust, and Zagara goes down. Yeah, Divine Shield was already used, so was more. Saka realizing there's not much he can do here, but there are mercenaries about to hit the core as well as minion waves. So we're seeing here Johanna doing the correct thing, going straight for the temple, and Falstad flying in. They're going for the back door. Fala coming in to prevent the shots going down. We see Jada go back to try and defend the core, but there's a lot here. Falstad taking so much damage. Looks like he might go down here, but there's still shots on the core. Uther coming in to try and finish the game here. Still shots going onto the core. Roll backing up. And here comes Uther, he's gonna try and finish it himself, he's going in, and that's GG! Mitch and Leoric on the temple, able to finish the game, the only two al left alive on their team. And that is game number one, going over to Elysium. Welcome to game two, everybody. We are on Dragonshire, and it is once again Edge of Madness versus Elysium Gaming. And to the left side of the map, we currently see Edge of Madness. They are down one game in the best of three series here at the Heroes Championship Qualifier for Katowice. We have Drakir on Muradin, Nathan on Jaina, Reigns on Leoric, Knappe on Morales, and Lolovic on Reyna. To the right side of the map, the setup that we are seeing here for Team Elysium with Mitch on Karazim, Mondake on Johanna, Dirty Sweet is playing Zagara again. We have Zaka on Vala and Xagonos this time on Kelthas. A very interesting draft with the Morales coming through the draft as well. And as the last choice on the side of Elysium was not a Sonya, which would definitely have been a great option for them, they decided to go into Vala. Morales seems like she is going to be pretty safe with good positioning in this game now to heal up the entire team. So it's going to be a pretty cool game here. I'm Kala, with me is Tetra, and we're going to bring you the coverage at Game 2 of the Best of 3 series between Edge of Madness and Elysium. And for those of you who are watching for the first time since the patch, no, Tyrande was not banned. This is just the fact that the nerves have made her not that first pick. You do still see her picked early, but in this case, they decided that Morales was the better choice. Very aggressive coming out here. 
from the side of a uh, from the side of Edge of Madness, but not able to catch anyone. And in the top lane, Reyna gonna have a little bit of trouble right now. Is doing a very good job pushing back Zagara. Uh, Reyna at the top lane, dealing with the Zagara, and at the same time we have Nathan, Reigns, Dracula, and Gnappe now all rotating between the mid and the bot lane. You could of course go and try and set Leoric up against Zagara here too with the skeleton swing. For now we have as a level one talent by the way, trauma trigger chosen for Morales. Very standard talent for the hero. There's a couple of different builds around, especially when you're looking at the NA server too, but mostly you will see Trauma Trigger as the level 1 talent. you are having a healing Charism going for Transcendence as the level 1 talent here on his part as well. Of course, Knight takes Pawn for Johanna. And in the case of Reyna, it is not Give Me More, but he decided to go into the more aggressive Seasoned Marksman to get those extra stacks for the auto attack, which is especially going to put a lot of pressure onto Johanna in the later stages of the game. Yeah, he's going to have a bit more freedom to do that damage as well, seeing as he has the two frontliners and the Morales for that incredible amount of healing. For now, though, he has to make sure he's not going to die because Kale Pass has rubbed his way up to the top lane to try and put some pressure onto him, but he was able to retreat behind his wall. Yeah, Reigns and Dracula going for the rotation again. The thing is that the rotation in general is offering you an opportunity to just get a lot of stacks going. Reyna, unfortunately, is not part of that rotation. That is a bit of a problem for him regarding the Seasoned Marksman stacks. They will get the reanimation globes, on the other hand, for Leoric, which is going to help him a little later stage of the game uh, quite a bit. Up at the top lane, Muradin is now trying to support Reyna a bit and they're going for that shrine since both of them have now been controlled by Elysium. They also hit the earlier level 4, but there's again one of the shrines taken over, so no early Dragonite for either one of these teams. Yeah, Edge Madness had a lot of control over that mid lane as well, so they didn't need to worry about it too much. Could have quite easily contested. And it looks like they're going to have a little thing about going for that bottom shrine, which will put both of them in their favor. So Elysium, with four people in the mid lane, though, aren't going to have any of that drag here. Actually sneaking around the long way, looking to maybe make a play. Oh, trying to distract for Nathan. But Nathan's not going to be able to get this. Johanna will delay too long. Raid's going to push back. And Bot Shrine goes back over to Elysium. Uh, Johanna had to move out quite a bit though to make that happen and make sure that there's no Dragonite in the hands of the opponents. So now both of the Shrines are suddenly in control of the red team again. It's a nice back and forth that we actually have in the second game now. Elysium of course is very eager to take this with the 2-0 against their opponent. We have as a level 4 talent has already highlighted before the advanced block taken for Morales. Hardened Bones for Leoric. Snowstorm for the radius increase on Nathan which is going to make his blizzards a lot more powerful. And now a three-man commitment to the mid lane to try and sneak that Dragonite. Johanna, unlike we saw last game, going with the Laws of Hope as opposed to the Amplified Healing. We saw last game, this one, a this time, a little bit more standard to what we usually see. Bottom Shrine, once again, going over to Edge of Madness, and they are able to push back Mitch here, so they do get control of that, and once again, neutralize the Dragonite. There's a lot of wave clear actually on the side of the red team. Illusion with a multi-shot build on Vala is getting that in. And we also have, of course, Condemn for Johanna. She did not go into Eternal Retaliation, as Tetra already said. So we are seeing instead the Laws of Hope for the sustain. But it still allows her to use Night Takes Pawn and take down these minions. For now, though, Johanna is in a lot of trouble trying to escape. Yes, Zaka is moving in. Mitch is attempting to help out now too, starting to heal. But they're going for Johanna. Still, both of those shrines are under the control of the red team. Illusion is trying to go for a Dragonite but they won't be able to move in here. Zagara had to move back to get hit points and mana back, but at the top lane, there's a ton of pressure against Lolovic, and this lane is under serious duress. Yeah, he is holding it back for the moment, not able to get anything out of it, and he's already lost his towers. Uh, right now, though, he is still building stacks long up here, so as long as he can protect that keep and maybe that fountain, he shouldn't be in too much trouble up here, but the fact that he lost the towers already is still a big chunk of XP that they've given over to Elysium right now. Edge of Man is moving in onto Mondurk here. He's been dropped very low. But there's the heal from Mitch. They're not giving up though. There is the slow. Can they catch him? A nice iron skin there to block that ice so he does not get slowed and is able to pull back. Last second iron skin. The cooler just came up again and was able to use it. No level 7 talent yet for Johanna, by the way. Conviction would have probably moved her out of harm's way even a bit faster than that. Endless creep for Zagara is going to provide vision on the map. And of course, with the fission bomb on Kalathas, we are going to see that chain bomb build once again. The strongest build on the hero still. Ghastly reach this time for Leoric over the paralyzing rage, which we've seen in the last game. And we're seeing at the same time the piercing bolt for Muradin to try and get those double stuns in during team fights. Still the pressure play up at the top, and you can really tell that Edge of Madness is under a lot of trouble here. I mean, they are always under so much pressure because of that bot lane and top lane shrine that is under the control of Elysium. And Elysium is using that to push in lanes, take down structures, and establish an experience lead for themselves. 
Top shrine though is taken back by Edge of Madness. Johanna made a little play onto mid, but was very outnumbered, unable to once again capture that Dragonite. While this is happening, bot lane was just pushed up by Elysium because no one from Edge of Madness was there because they were all defending the mid lane from being captured. Hmm. Those siege giants were able to do a lot of work. The tower does live, but for how much longer is the question? And Brannis takes a lot of damage taken out there, and that is actually first blood. Yeah, first blood in the game, and Morales a bit out of position, which was immediately capitalized upon by the opponent. Level 10 is now in play, and that means that the blue team has to back off here. Yeah, Edge of Madness, they have to move back. There is already the Divine Palm. We have by now also finally the level 7 talent taken. It is battle momentum that Johanna went for. Waited a long time for the talents to be chosen here. Yeah, Mitch in a bit of trouble, has to actually Divine Palm himself, even though the opponent isn't even level 10 yet. They still have both of those shrines under their control, since Zagara is pushing the top lane quite heavily. Reyna just has no chance against her here. Every single time there's a new Hydralis coming in play, pushing him back. And now the Dragonite is about to be captured, but Draka is in position just in the nick of time to make sure that the channel is interrupted. Zagara also able to use her creep to see Nathan coming up to try and gank her. Was able to back up and keep control of his top temple despite being in a one versus two. And now with the timing, Kaelbass has arrived. Nathan gets wiped out and Raider is in the more. Takes a huge amount of damage and he's wiped out as well. An amazing turn there and the Dragon Knight was captured in the mid lane. Elysium suddenly start to snowball. Really well played here. Great play on their side. And now they have the Dragon Knight and go in right away. Yeah, they have the Dragon Knight going to push in here. Level 10 has been hit by Edge of Madness here, and they're going to try and defend as best they can, but they're being pushed on multiple fronts here. Zagara still putting pressure on that top lane and still spreading creep, finally going to be back just to get a little bit of mana. The Dragon Knight in the mid lane was fairly uncontested because two people were down, only two people trying to defend it, and bot lane still being pushed by Valor and Karazim finally being defended by Reigns and Nullivik. Now we have the Dragonite in the mid lane, still doing a bit of damage. Bot lane, as you already said, is now assailed by three heroes. Zagara moving to the top again. So they try to just like split the heroes over three lanes to maximize the amount of experience that they get during that Dragonite phase. And it really works for them. They have a one and a half level lead over Edge of Madness. And they already won the first game. If they are successfully taking this one as well, they would end up in the next round of the tournament. Nice Divine Palm saving for now Vala. Vala needs to move back here, but so does Meridian. Jumps out, Leoric dying. And this attack by Edge of Madness did not work out in their favor. They pushed in with five heroes, but they lost one. It's a five versus four that they're fighting down at the bot lane. And Zagara is still up at the top and starting to take down one of the forts. So this is the, the worst case scenario. Committing five heroes to an attack, losing one of those heroes, and abandoning a lane at the same time without getting anything in return. Yeah, they even used the Stim Drone or that Raider to try and secure kills there, and they still weren't able to do it. Valor surviving thanks to Karazi, and now, well, Lizzie are just even further ahead. Skara finally having some contention up in the top lane, but, well, the fort went down a little bit ago, so the lane is just continuously being pushed. It's forcing people to come and react to it. And with the level 13 talent lead that they have now, of course, this is going to improve their chances even more, especially since the Chain Bombs are now ready for Kel'thas. Chain Bombs on 13, the Frost Shot, a great talent for Vala. It's one of the most amazing talents if you go for a multi-shot build. If you reach level 13, you feel so much safer since you finally have a slow. It helps you to chase down heroes. It helps you to escape. It's an amazing talent. It's one of the best talents on the hero in general. We have now Burning Rage taken for Johanna. Relentless, of course, for Charism. And they are still one and a half levels ahead in the next Dragon is already announced the shrines will be active in 20 seconds yeah, shrines will be active very soon and Lizzie are trying to take the advantage of that by getting an equity advantage as much as they can they get the mid fort and now edge of man is going to be very hard pressed to fight back they still don't have their level 13s here so elysium have full control of anything they want for now they appear to be moving as a bit of a group towards bot lane but johanna is peeling off for top lane and uh, she may need to be careful because there are quite a few members of edge of Mats in that top lane but in the meantime the rest of her team grabbing that bot fort and they'll be able they've already grabbed that bottom shrine johanna not even bothering with the top shrine for now just clearing the minion wave whereas edge of Mats clearing up the bruises Bruises are taken and the Shrines are active in both take level 13 dropping into the hands of Edge of Madness now. But we already have both of the Shrines active. Murden immediately heading into mid lane to interrupt a potential channel. And we have him going straight into Spell Shield now too. So he's really respecting the damage coming from Karazim here. We have on level 13 Couples Therapy now chosen after the cleanser level 7 for Morales. But the push at the bot lane is just continuing with now the fort being or the keep being assailed. 
In comes Muradin. Good double stun. A lot of members coming in. The more, however, catching Raider just to the Stim Drone. And that allows Muradin to be focused. Down he goes. Raider, even with the Stim Drone on, gets taken down. Morales not able to do damage. The good in tune, though, will allow Morales and Jaden to get out of there. And the Ring of Frost also for good measure. But that's still two kills in favor of in exchange for zero. And it allows Elysium to continue pushing this in with all five heroes. They also have level 16 now. And that, of course, gives a huge power spike once again to the team in red. And they use it to go straight for the keep. They have a five versus three situation in the game. And they have the extra talent that they're using now. Especially the Brute Expansion on Zagara is giving her so much extra damage. Reigns actually Wraith walking into the opponent's team and deciding against it in the last moment. That was a very wise choice. No chance of actually taking anybody down here. They're all still on full HP. They push the lanes back. Top lane has to be defended and they are already moving towards it. But let's keep in mind that there's still two active shrines on the map, but we have not a single kill yet on the side of Edge of Madness. It's zero kills against six. Yeah, they seem to be putting so much effort into that Stim Drone Raider style, but they can't seem to get it to work. Zagara has been very on point with Moors. And, well, Raider just hasn't been able to drop the damage. He does have 20 Season Marksman bonus damage, but at the moment it's not proving enough. Valor going for the Dragonite, but it is neutralized from the bot lane via Drakir and Morales. Another camp taken. Bruiser camps now on the map for the team in red. Elysium is starting to use that advantage, and in the mid lane they are already starting the push. We have Sigara just like everywhere trying to just place down more creep tumors to know exactly about the movements of the opponent and with that three level advantage that they have by now they are moving in they already won game number one on sky temple and right now they're really trying to show edge of madness who's bossy on on the um, i want to say sky temple but it is dragonshire so they are starting to move in and you can really tell that without the level 16 talent edge of madness is just incredibly cautious here because they know that they can't win up a straight up they can't win a straight up team fight now yeah, they still have a level and a bit going for there, even on the same talent tier as Elysium Game. And Valor has finally split off from her team, but looks like she may attempt to make a play on that bottom, trying to finally give her team a Dragonite. But we can see Muradin heading up to the top one. They're going to try and do a trade, but it might be too late this time. Valor just about to capture. Muradin just reaching that top trade. It's going to be quite close. There's the deny from the uh, Morales grenade, though. And there you see the Shrine trade going in once again. Edge of Madness doing a good job of delaying this Dragonite from happening, but Reigns in a little bit of trouble. Yeah, not only a little bit, Leori goes down, is locked down in place and blasted away. No chance for him to make anything happen. He has seven kills against zero now, and with the first keep already gone in the bot lane, we are seeing Elusio moving into the mid lane to drop another one. The Hyperion has been used, though. And do we see that Stim Drone again? Not yet. They are waiting out the Hyperion, and of course, Leoric is going to be back soon. He needs to be careful, though. He's pretty far out here. Yeah. And he could be sniped. I'm not quite sure what uh, he's thinking. Mistakes were made. Rave walk, rave walk, rave walk. It's a lot of damage. But he is able to get out on half health. If Kael has been there, I think he might have died. Yeah, but Kalathus is at the top and is trying to secure another shrine for them and already everybody else in the mid lane down to the bottom of the map. Dracula is attempting to channel the bottom, but there is Dirty Sweet buying the time for the Dragonite to be taken. Great moves here on the side of Elysium. We have level 16 talents finally ready for Edge of Madness and they use now also Executioner on Reyna. It's all about that Stim Drone Reyna with Season Marksman and Executioner. They're trying to get the massive amount of damage out there. Whereas Morales headed into inoculation. But this is a tricky spot for them to be in. Three levels down. The same talent, yes. But can Reyna really make the difference with the Stim Drone and all this massive damage output that he has on his auto attacks? We will have to see. Jada has Northern Exposure as well. So they do have a fair amount of burst damage now. But if they, can, if they can't get it off, they're still going to be in trouble. Leoric looking for an angle to a tomb here. Right now, just doing as much damage as he can. Morales taking a lot of damage. Couple spare up, keeping a heal. There is the tomb on Savannah. Blizzard follow up, but the more catches three. Ring of Frost does catch a few, and the path will be waited out here. Out comes all of the members here, but Muradin gets taken down. In exchange for Valor though, but Leoric going down as well. No Stim Drone used on Raiden. Seems the wrong side of the keep to defend this, and the Dragonite still just sieging buildings here. This is like they want to go for the Koyak, so Dragonite is too low on health, but this is still a very tough defense for Edge of Madness to uh, make here. So we can see Elysium back it up though. They don't want to risk getting caught out when the Dragonite ends. Just moving up to the top lane to clear that up as well. 
Vala was the first kill on the side of Edge of Madness, the first kill in the game that they succeeded with, but now the level 20s are in play, and with the Storm Talons, we have, of course, even more mobility for Elysium. It was already tricky enough taking them down before that, but now they have a double bolt of the Storm ready on Kalthus and Zagara, and Vala could decide to head into another bolt of the Storm if she really wants to. Indestructible, the talent that we expect on Johanna hasn't been taken yet. We have two keeps down, three level disadvantage for Edge of Madness. It's going to take an eternity for them to catch up in talents and get that storm talents on there and very tricky spot for them to be in now the entire game they've been playing from behind and now they have to somehow attempt to soak the lanes to get level 20 but it's going to be an extremely difficult task yeah they do get a siege strike camp which will slightly counter the siege strike camp and bruiser lane that were taken by elysium gaming here and they're also sending a lot of heroes down to defend this however elysium moving up are just going to steal their bruiser camp instead they could also try and move down here and try and get a bit of a surprise attack and that looks like they're what they're going to do instead blizzard will spot this mod that coming in wants to try and catch someone he's got from here and reigns here the two tanks will he drop the flare shield there's the improve with a nice it's a force wall to protect the rest of his team we have not indestructible taken for Johanna, by the way. She went into a second Storm Shield. The ball of the Storm as expected on Vala. So an incredible amount of mobility that we are now seeing on the side of Elysium Gaming. And of course, that makes, once again, the Entomb on the side of Leoric. Yeah, a little bit useless depending on what he wants to achieve. He used a nice one now on at the bottom to protect the rest of the team here and zone them out. But in this case now, the only keep remaining is the one at the top. And that's where we are currently seeing Lucium starting to focus their attention to. Another Dragonite is also going to be up in another 13 seconds. A tough spot to be in again for Edge of Madness. It's just a lot of damage. He did get hit by that Northern Exposure Coda Cold there and a Blizzard. But he's pretty much able to heal up very quickly thanks to the fact he has Circle of Life and that Echo of Heaven on his main heal. They seem putting as much pressure on here as possible so that they know that Edge of Madness will be busy defending this lane while they go for the Draconate if they need to, or they may just end up getting a kill here. In comes the Phoenix to try and zone. Drakir, not even on the defense, he's just grabbing a shrine in the bot lane to make sure no Draconite is taken. Reigns having to be killed up by Morales to stay alive and not a bit, taking so much damage from the ballot here. Yeah, oh, Reigns actually down even with the Hyperion pushing the opponent back. Leoric still died. Draco is staying on the bot lane trying to get the experience for his team so that they reach level 20. But they are going to lose that keep up at the top. It's already down to half HP. And again, we have Elysium starting to push in here. They have so many shields, especially with the Storm Shields available to two heroes. Draco is starting to move in, but Leoric is still dead. Yeah, Leoric will be back quite soon though. The respawn time on him is not very long. He's getting a lot of drain off. So that, that lowers his three for chamber once again pushing very aggressively while in ghost form, but this time does pull back to prevent himself from dying. And the fact that Utha, di uh, sorry, Murder did grab that bottom shrine does mean that it's going to take a little bit longer for Elysium to grab the Dragonite, and that gives Edge of Madness a slight amount of time to try and position themselves to delay this. They can either run into the mid lane, or looks like they're going to raid this bottom temple and try and take it back before the Dragonite's captured, but they're far too late, and Mondurk gets the Dragonite. Zagara not even dying at the bot lane, it was only Leoric and Morales who were trying to go for it, and of course 18 minutes in, this Dragonite is a beast. We nearly have level 20 ready for Edge of Madness, but it might already be too late as all of the keeps are gone, and with the help of the Dragonite, they are going to go for core here. They're going to try and take the game and win this series with the 2-0 that's moving in against Leoric, who has to move back and gets even punted away now. Yeah, Lolovic. Popping back into his hall, getting a bit of help, but we're seeing Elysium maybe move on to the core here. Storm shields uh, will be used very soon here and will get a lot of shielding. It's Dragonite doing all the work. Nice bolt from Sinaka, and they're able to do everything onto the core. Sakara, the only one close to dying, and that is GG. And Elysium take the series in a 2-0. Okay, everybody, that's it for the day. We had some really fun games here, and I hope that you enjoyed them and also the commentary. Of course, we're going to have more Heroes of the Storm action on the channel in the near future. So if you enjoy the esports scene in Heroes of the Storm, make sure that you hit that subscribe button on Color TV and also like the video if you haven't done that yet already. There's going to be more European games. We're going to have more North American matches as well. And of course, if you're interested in the Chinese Heroes of the Storm esports scene, I'm going to have more games on the channel as well in the near future as those leagues start again. At the same time, though, if you have friends that are also interested in esports and in Heroes of the Storm, make sure that you forward the channel to them and share it with them. It was a pleasure casting for you today, guys. I hope that you enjoyed it, as I already mentioned, and I hope to see you next time for more Heroes of the Storm action here on Kaldor TV. See you guys soon. Have a great day. Bye-bye.